Hey guys, in this video we're going to be taking an in-depth look, comparing the G41 to the G43. So I just picked up the G41 uh, earlier this week. Um, super happy to have it. It's a, a DUV43. Um, this is one of those guns that I never really thought I would have. They're pretty rare. They're very expensive. Um, and if it wasn't for Joel at Panzerfaust Armory, I probably wouldn't really have one for a long, long time. So before I get into the comparison, I just wanted to make a couple notes about the handling of the G41. Um, first off, I weighed this one at 11 pounds, three ounces. So it's, it's pretty heavy. Um, it's got quite a bit of weight up front because of the gas system. Um, it's not really one of those guns that I would want to use and carry around for a long period of time. Uh, just the, the, the weight and balance of this gun is just, it's, it's, it's really too much. Another interesting thing I came across this gun is that, um, so the bolt hold open is pretty much only for whenever the gun's dry. Um, there is a little, um, little button on the bolt carrier so that you have to pull it back and then you can flick it. Now normally that's used for um, disassembling the bolt. However, if you wanted to reload a, a partially loaded magazine, you actually have to use that button and lock the bolt back in order for it to stay back for you to load it. These are actually um, original military uh, dummy rounds that I'm, that I'm using in the gun. Here, so I'll try to show you exactly what I mean. So uh, right now, there's three rounds of the gun, so there's two in the magazine, um, one in the chamber, and I'm gonna simulate topping this gun off with a five round stripper clip. So this is something that um, you would do maybe in, in combat or whatever if you just wanted to top the gun off. Um, first off, if you do that, that uh, the live round is going to eject out of, the, um, out of the chamber, and if you let go of the bolt, it's just gonna fly forward and it's gonna chamber the other round. So what you have to do actually is if you wanna catch the round, you have to wrap your thumb sort of around the bolt carrier and then catch that round as it gets ejected out. And then you can sort of press it back in. And then if you're real talented, you can kind of come back here with your thumb and catch the bolt back. Now you can take your five rounds and then feed that into the gun. Um, and then this will actually close um, with the clip. Um, this is a little awkward because you have to then sort of um, take off this catch and then let it go forward. So um, it's not like the best system for topping up. Almost for all the trouble of it, I would almost just shoot it empty and then uh, just reload it with two five round stripper clips if I was a soldier, maybe in, in combat. On the range or something that's, you know, doesn't really matter so much, but that's just kind of something that you don't see in the handling of this gun um, in video games or anything like that. Something else to note, it is possible to have 10 rounds in the magazine uh, with nothing in the chamber in this gun. Um, so you can, if you wanted to have a loaded 10 round mag in an empty chamber, you could do that. Or, you know, maybe if you're real fancy, you know, you can have 11 rounds total in the gun to, to start off with at least. So to start off the comparison, I'm gonna take the top hand guards off both of the guns. I'm not gonna get in going over the bang system and exactly how that works. If you're watching this video, you probably already know that. Um, there are videos out there showing that. I just don't wanna regurgitate the same information all the time. So I'm gonna to try to touch on points that I haven't heard before in G41 videos. All right, to start off back here, you can tell that there is um, way more stuff going on with the G41. Um, this gas system is, I mean, it's its pretty, it's just crazy. It's its nuts that this was a good idea at all. So um, the front sight and this whole piece here is just, um, it's one solid unit. And the only thing that keeps this in place and lined up is the way that these um, the little top here extends out in between these two pieces. These two pieces right here are actually an extension off the barrel. And uh, this whole thing, if you wiggle it, I mean, it just has the very slightest sort of give to it. And I mean, that is connected to your front sight. So it's really not a good idea that there's that much play for your front sight. So I can't imagine that these guns would be um, accurate after, after so many years and uh, so much wear and tear on them. Um, this is the op rod. It's a really long, flat piece of metal. So here we can see how the op rod uh, interacts with the return spring. So it's just this little nub sticking out. It's on either side. 
and there's just this little uh, extension off of this op rod here that just uh, connects to it and that just returns the uh, the op rod in its original position after firing the gun. I'm, I'm guessing that there was no really good way or they couldn't figure out a way maybe of adding a return spring to this without it sitting up too high. So what they did was put it, um, put it in the stock underneath. Um, later on, I'll take the stock off and I'll show you what that looks like. Now, of course, the gas system is completely different on the G43 and being copied from the SVT. So they have the return spring here. Um, I mean, this really saves a lot of parts, just putting a one spring over the op rod here instead of having to have this under, under stock situation. Um, the rear sights are pretty much identical. Um, the only really minor things about it is that they don't, they don't checker the sides here. So these are sort of two buttons that you press in in order to change that. These are nice and checkered on the, uh, on the G41. So that's really nice. Um, also the G41 has a, uh, has a scope mount here. Um, for a little, uh, it's a little tiny ZF4 scope. It's, it's nothing like a sniper scope or anything like that. And of course that's absent on the, uh, on the G43 here because they put the scope rail in a different position. And it's pretty obvious. You could just see right here the overall level of, um, you know, fit and finish that went on to the G41 is just a, a much higher level than on the G43s. You can see these, um, this, these rough sort of forging marks on all of the parts. You know, at this point, they didn't really care cosmetically. Um, interestingly enough, you know, on a, on a G41 that's made in 1943, they're still going to be all polished up like this. But even on a 1943 made G43, um, it's, it's going to be rough like this. Like this was a decision change um, with the G43 not to, not to finish these any, any nicer. It's not necessarily... Um, just something based on the year of manufacture. So now ignoring these two features here, this is just a late war uh, Walther K43 sort of modification. Um, the bolts are very, very similar. I, you could sort of tell a little bit that the, that the G41 bolt is a little bit uh, more nicer made. Another up close are the two bolts. You know, you can see the very obvious finish differences between the two. Um, however, when you flip them over and look on the inside, these are surprisingly similar. The, the overall machine marks and level of finish on the two look very, very similar. Um, I think this really just goes to show that these G43s, um, even though they may look a little rough because of the outside, um, they finished them well where it mattered. So this is probably the worst thing I think the Germans did with the G43 is to introduce this, uh, this stamped bolt housing. Um, these are much weaker and they're much more prone to cracking and breaking. And in fact, if you, if you shoot yours enough, uh, the bolt housing will break. Originally, these were supposed to be made out of uh, just a solid piece of milled steel. Um, this is much stronger, it's much thicker, and this is um, definitely much better at standing up to the, the abuse of, of firing it because this gun does have a slightly violent action to it. And you kind of need this strong piece of milled steel here in order, to, uh, in order to take that abuse. Just to show you the differences here, the G43 is on the bottom. And you can see that it's not, the, the receivers are not exactly identical on the two. There were quite a few changes uh, made between the two. Um, you can see, of course, the magazine area looks a little bit different on the G43 because this is a, it's a detachable magazine where this one is fixed. Um, Overall, though, as well, you can see a little bit more attention to detail on the G41. This G41 has a pretty nice blued finish remaining. Uh, this late in the war, they switched to a phosphate-like uh, coating. So um, originally, the G43s would be blued like the G41s, but that's just why you see the difference here. Um, also, another thing that's just particular to this exact um, K43 is this, uh, this dual guide rib here or guide lug, um, they machined these off of the earlier ones, uh, but it was left on this particular rifle, but these are usually machined off of G43s as well. So here's the uh, spring assembly, or the return spring for the op rod. Um, this is the bottom of the, uh, and actually embedded inside of the, the G41 stock. And the way this works is that it's just these little surfaces here on the op rod go down and sit on this. So that way, Whenever this goes backwards, um, this, this spring actually can push it back forward. So you can probably guess this is the G41 on bottom here. And I mean, this is a part of the gun that's underneath the wood line. You know, this is never going to be seen except for by an armor or something like that. Yet the Germans still took the time 
to machine off all the forging marks that you can see here on the on the 43 and I mean that's just I mean even the level of craftsmanship and parts like this below the wood line is really sort of top notch and it's really not needed and therefore you don't see that um, on the 43s. On the right here we have a K98K to show the similarities between the later K98K cupped butt plate and the G41 butt plate. Uh, these are pretty much identical uh, parts. Um, they're just made out of a single piece of stamped steel. And then we have here on the left is the G41 butt plate. And what they did was incorporate this little uh, door in it that you can actually flip open. And inside is a compartment that held uh, a couple spare parts, a manual, and a little oiler for the gun. So this is a nice little improvement that they made on the G43s. Now one of the features the G41 has that the uh, G43 does not have is the ability to um, have a bayonet attached on it. So on the G41 is just the standard uh, bayonet attachment that you see on the K98K. So therefore you can have a bayonet attached to your G41. So you can see this sort of, uh, you know, an older war mentality of you need a bayonet on your, on your rifle. That of course was totally ditched on the G43 design. They just omitted the lug or anything like that because at that point they realized, you know, bayonet fighting is sort of a, sort of a novelty. Um, doesn't really happen. At least that's what the Germans opinion was. And that's why they don't really have any uh, bayonet lugs on any of the guns that they sort of sort of came out late war. Even the K98Ks that they were coming out with at the very end of the war, the, the Kriegs models, they omitted the bayonet lug on them. So G41s, they're set up in a little bit more uh, traditional way of using um, two barrel bands here. So the rear one, um, it has a little loop for the, for the sling to go through. So the little uh, the side sling, the same one that's on the K98K, you put through the stock here and then that would go through the loop. So this would be the barrel band that holds the sling. And then this front one is just another, um, just sort of piece to hold all the front pieces together. Um, we have this, uh, the very similar band spring um, set up as the, uh, the Mauser rifles. So, you know, this is, this is also multiple pieces, um, two springs, two bands. And that was simplified on the G43. So here you just have a single, uh, a single barrel band. A lot of times these are called nose caps. Um, so there's no other band. Um, this does have a sling loop built into the side here for your sling attachment. So with this rifle, you do eliminate some extra parts. Um, this seems to be just, you know, plenty strong. Um, so it's a pretty good, you know, way of just getting out of having to machine those extra parts and cut down on overall production time. Usually whenever a person is, is issued a, a G43, they'd be issued one of these magazine pouches and two extra magazines. Now these magazines were not disposable. These were kept on a card. Um, a, a German soldier could be actually like severely punished for losing equipment. Um, so th these weren't disposable magazines. So whenever you have a soldier and he's going to reload his magazine, he's going to have to remove the magazine out of his gun, reach down into his pouch. He's going to have to open up this pouch, lift out a fresh loaded magazine, and then take the empty magazine fit it into the pouch, and then reach up and put this loaded magazine into the gun and then run the, run the action. So it's, it's so many extra steps, I think, in order to actually load one of these uh, brand new mags out of the pouch that I think it really sort of narrows the time between just reloading with two stripper clips and reloading with a new magazine. I, I think it sort of makes up some of that difference where it's not a whole lot faster. Um, Really, by the end of the war, a lot of times when guys would get G43s, they wouldn't be issued um, any extra magazines, and they would just keep their their standard um, K98K ammunition pouches that they would have on their on their you know on the rig, and they would just reload the G43 with stripper clips the same way that they reloaded the G41. Um, so it's one of those things, you know, where on paper it's a lot faster and it's a better idea. But in, but in practice, it didn't necessarily equal a lot of better performance in the field. So what I have on here, this is a set of uh, German field gear with the ammo pouches, belt, Y straps. Um, this is just a bunch of standard stuff that uh, German riflemen possibly would be uh, wearing and running around with in World War II. So what we're gonna do here is a little experiment. Uh, I'm going to reload the G41 using two five round stripper clips from one of the standard K98K 
um, ammunition pouches. We're going to see how fast that one is. And then I'm going to actually put the G43 pouch onto my gear, and then we're going to reload it um, the, the way I just showed, wherever we try to conserve and, and save the, the old magazine, and see really which one's faster and, and how much one's faster than the other. Bing, bing. You could sort of see the, the two time frames there and the, the difference in time between the two. Um, so if, if the mags were um, maybe a little bit more easy to get to, maybe if they were disposable and there's plenty of them and you, know, you could just you, you know, throw these things away after you use them, I bet that would really speed up the reload process. But just the fact that they had to retain these magazines, I think is probably the, the, the biggest detriment to the G43 reload. Now in comparison to that, let's see how fast a reload would be on the US rifle using a standard uh, ammunition belt. Ping! That felt a lot faster. I don't know if that was a whole lot faster on video, but that, that felt faster. Um, <laughs> that's where the G41 even makes the, uh, the M1 feel pretty light in comparison. So this is the part of the video where I read the comments from the previous week and I just read whichever ones stand out to me. Crazy how pricey Mauser have gotten considering they're not even very accurate as compared to some other rifles of the era per average and most of those can be had for much less for now. Um, Mausers are insanely accurate. I don't know where you're getting this from that they're not very accurate. Um, they're very accurate. They're not the only accurate gun. Like there's a lot of other Milserps out there that are accurate like Swiss guns is a great example of that. Um, and yes, they're really, really pricey. So like maybe Swiss guns might be the most accurate Milserp rifle out there maybe. Um, so, and like a Swiss like G11 rifle is a lot cheaper than like a really nice pristine K98K. So I can kind of see your point that like for the money, there's more accurate options out there, but that's not to say that Mausers aren't accurate. People don't show or tell anyone what you have. I mean, that's that's kind of what I do. Oh, uh, that's a cute little mini rack. See you in 10 years when you've taken over the entire garage, LOL. Remember, ammo never goes down in price, always up. Buy it cheap, stack it deep. I mean, that's pretty good. That's pretty good uh, pretty good advice with the with the ammo, but I can't take over the entire garage. My wife likes parking in the garage. How about a video on advice when moving a lot of guns and ammo across country? Um, I've thought about that, but I just don't think a whole lot of people care enough to, to warrant me making the video on it. Um, if you want to know, I'll give you some quick advice. Look up the laws of where you're going to and the states that you're moving through. If you have any NFA items, you need to fill out Form 20s in advance. Um, other than that, what I did was I knew the weight limit of the trailer that I was using to haul all my guns and ammo. It's pretty tedious, monotonous, but I actually took each ammo can and I put it on a scale and I weighed it and I wrote the weight and then I had a, like a sheet of paper. I kept chart, kept track of all the weights um, on a chart of all the different, um, all the ammo and all the guns that I had. And I had a, had a total of all the weight. Um, that's a really good way to do it. That way you don't over, overweigh the trailer. And it is really easy to overload a trailer on, on a big move. And, you know, moving out west, we went up and down a lot of mountains and it was... It was very important that the trailer weight was loaded correctly, so all the weight in the front of the trailer, and that it, you know, it wasn't, it could have been bad if it was, if we messed up on that. I don't agree that Florida is the new California. We still have a lot less stringent gun laws than a ton of other states. I go to Tallahassee for every judicial session, go lobby our lawmakers. Uh, we were successful in 2019 with no new gun laws. I think everyone else should too. We need support to reverse this, the, this current laws on the books. Uh, hashtag repeal the NFA. Yes, definitely go out there and fight the good fight. Um, you know, you have to lobby your, you know, your, your lawmakers and everything. Um, I'd still stand with what I said. I, I think that Florida is getting more and more strict. Yeah, there's still some states that are less strict than Florida, but 
Like, what are those, California? Like, yeah, you're better than California, but that's, that's not saying much. So say, just, just as an example, the state I live in now, Missouri, uh, we have constitutional carry, we have open carry, not that I ever would open carry. Um, we have no waiting period on rifles or, or handguns. You can buy uh, rifles and shotguns when you're 18 from FFLs. There's just a lot of better states than that, and it's nothing I would take. Like, it's, it's a weird feeling now. When I go back to Florida, I can't buy a gun because of Florida laws. Because I'm an, I'm an out-of-state resident, and there's a waiting period, and if I'm not going to wait around in Florida for the time. So I, I still think gun laws are going to get worse and worse in Florida. And I think they're going to get worse in Florida than faster than probably most other states. So uh, it's just kind of one of the reasons why I'm glad I got out of there. Hey, you forgot to include a polymer TAPCO or ATI stock on your list. How am I supposed to shoot my historically significant rifle if I haven't made it tactical first? Maybe you should also include a Dremel on this list. It's the best way to hack off the barrel and cut up the stock so you can save a half pound of weight. Us Bubba have spaghetti noodles for arms, so we need all the weight reduction we can get. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Oh, man. What's that meme that the hominus dominus keep tap go off of us? It's kind of funny. I make this video just to kind of talk about the G41, and then somehow I end up doing a speed reload with the, the US M1 rifle. And I, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy this type of content. Um, I really enjoy making this type of stuff. So, um, you know, if you guys have any ideas for me or if you like this sort of stuff, let me know. I mean, the only way that I know of how you guys are receiving this or if you're liking it is your comments. So let me know if you like it. Let me know if it's trash. You know, just, just let me know in the comments and uh, maybe I'll read your comment in the future.